Round A, cross the NFL, 4 o'clock Eastern time, Saturday, tomorrow. Uh, so the Browns and everybody else across the NFL has to be at that 53-man roster. Let's bring back in our Browns expert, Jake Burns. Uh, Jake, when you look at the, the Browns roster as a total, the upgrade is pretty significant. Who are some, uh, some guys that are kind of on that bubble that, that you look at? Yeah, I think a name that is interesting to me, the, let's talk about the kicking game. It seems like Austin Seibert has won that battle. Um, he, he is going to be the kicker heading into the year. So that's a veteran now, Greg Joseph, who kicked the entire year last year's out. And then, I don't know. I think that there could be a surprise. They might keep Jamie Gillen. I, I, it would, it, listen, I would have said two weeks ago that it was uh, 90% sure that 95% sure that Britton Colquitt would be back as the punter, but Jamie Gillen has just continued to impress. And he, he not only is able to punt the ball effectively with, with, you know, ridiculous distance and, and depth, He's also athletic enough to go down and make tackles and be a plus defender on your special teams group. And even if you get into a pinch, the nice part of what he can do is he's got field goal kicking experience, uh, which is also important. And he's, he's come along really nicely as a holder. I, I'm to the point where it's 60, 40 now. And uh, I could see, you know, Gillen there's a 40% chance of making the roster. If they want to, you know, lose the salary there to, to Colquitt and go young and develop, continue developing this guy. Cause he's an NFL level punter. And, um, you know, if he's if he's able to to I'm not sure he's able to be stashed away for another year. So if they if they feel some pressure to keep him and settle that on on, on you know, Gillen for the long term, that's one to watch. I think uh, offensively, it feels to me like Braxton Miller is going to make the team. I, I, he could still not, obviously, but it just feels like the way they brought him in and moving on from Jalen Strong and needing a guy for four weeks uh, just to hold over until Antonio Callaway returns. It just seems to make a little bit of sense in terms of versatility that he could provide. Uh, offensive line-wise, Austin Corbett should be nervous. I certainly think he's he's on the precipice of not making the roster. He'll probably make it because they don't want to give up on a, on a 33rd overall pick in just over one year's time. But he should be very nervous because he has just been – anemic in the preseason uh you know I, I certainly don't i don't trust what he's been able to do and 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 like i said he'll probably make it but he shouldn't feel comfortable defensively something weird is probably going to happen at defensive end either zettel's not going to make the roster or uh chad thomas might not make this roster carl davis is probably out um danny Aquale is sort of on that bubble too depending on defensive tackles how many they want to keep that should be interesting. Equality is kind of like the third guy there behind Lawrence and Coley. So it'll see if they want to keep, um, you know, that many, uh, at least uh, six defensive tackles alone. Linebacker wise, Ray Ray Armstrong's probably, he's probably going to make it maybe just special teams wise. Cause he doesn't really add much defensively. He's a guy to pay attention to whether he, you know, finds a way to, to fit on this roster. Uh, I think those are the guys who are kind of like right on the cusp, but again, it depends. There's so much, it's hard to predict these things because I predicted it two days ago and they've already traded for Teller. Who's going to make it obviously as a right guard. It's like, they, they'll probably cut some people we don't expect and, and have another couple names that they just sort of scoop up and, and um, you know, whether those guys are free agents or whether those guys are waiver claims, I, I, I don't know, but I, I certainly think that there's, there's always with John Dorsey, there seems to be a level of unpredictability on some of those, uh, two or three or four names that we just didn't either know about because they're playing somewhere else or uh, we didn't know that they, 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 they had their eye on those things. So some of those guys, too, you think are safe. Like, I would have never guessed Carl Nassib didn't make the team last year. And, that you know, that move is kind of, in hindsight, not worked out very well. But uh, at the same time, I think that you just can never feel 100% solid about some of these guys. So even like the Derek Willies who have played well or the Dearness Johnson running back who has played well you just you never know they might feel like there's a running back on waivers or a free agent that they feel more comfortable with behind Hilliard or even alongside Hilliard to back up until you know Kareem Hunt gets back so um my guess my answer is you know expect the unexpected in this uh you know the next 24 hours here you mentioned and I had the same sense that there may be another trade I don't think it's going to be for a marquee name but I wouldn't be surprised if they try to find a way to get another uh young offensive lineman that they like. Is that kind of the, the mode that you're thinking? They're not going to go out and trade for Trent Williams. They're, they're not going to, to put a big-time money guy on that offensive line. But they might find some young guys that John Dorsey or Alonzo Highsmith thinks, this guy's on the verge of developing if we put him in the right situation. 
Is, is that kind of the mindset that you had? Is they're, they're going to look for line help? Yeah, I, I don't think they're done looking at line help. I think you look at franchises like New England, uh, those those teams are going to go out and get people, the people they want. You know, don't be discouraged, too, if somebody is, is um, you know, they go out and trade for somebody like Teller because people are like, well, this guy's going to get cut anyway. Well, that could be the case, but you don't know that you're going to have a chance for him in the waiver wire at 17. You just, some team could claim him before you. And I think if the Browns go out and get somebody, it's because they really want that guy and they don't want to risk not being able to get that player on the waiver wire. So uh, keep that in mind. That's that's all I'll say. Just because they go out and get somebody and, and, and the opposing fan base says, well, that guy was going to be cut anyway. Well, that's okay because, you know, they, they want to make sure that they get that person and they're going to do what they have to to make sure they get that person. I know for a fact that's what happened with Teller. And I'm not sure Teller was even getting cut anyway. He's a really good depth piece for the Bills. But, you know, look at it as they're going to go get who they want. They're not going to, you know, if you find a player you really want, say you find a young tackle they really like and uh, they think he's going to get cut or they think maybe a team's going to keep him for depth, they're going to say, what do we got to do to make sure we get this person? We don't want to kind of just play the luck game. And that's that's what I would keep in mind. And I think that teams like the Browns should be proactive when they have this roster in place. Don't be passive. Don't hope things are going to work out. Be aggressive. Go get the guys you think you can develop and, uh, you know, try to set this thing up for the next two or three years. Yeah, the other thing is to remember, this roster has been upgraded significantly, so it gets more and more difficult for them to go find players that can help. If they if they like and identify somebody, they got to do what they can do to, to bring them in and, and get them here. Yeah, and those are those are tough cuts. I mean, like, you know, in the past year, there might have been 15 guys who the coaching staff were saying, all right, we have 35 guys or 38 guys we feel really good about. Um, you know, we have 15 guys that are fringe, so let's debate this. It might be just five or six this year. They might really like I mean, I'm sure they do. I'm sure they really like a majority of this roster. There's probably less roster discussion going on than, than in years past than Browns fans are accustomed to is is there's a lot of things here are in place. And that includes the offensive line. I think the first five guys are the first five guys right now. So um, it's, it's just less, you know, it's less need. It's less, and, and anytime you have less need in the NFL, the, the better situation you're in, you don't have to reach or overextend for things. I think they feel like they settled the one spot that they probably need to reach or overextend at. And now they're just sort of going to pick and choose if they want to go out and get somebody. It's because they think this guy will be a very, very clear upgrade to what they have in house. Last question I'll ask you, Jake. Uh, again, appreciate the time. Great stuff. What uh, what rookie do you think is poised to potentially really make an impact? You know, we we had all those defensive guys that uh, have shown they can play. Which one do you think might be the guy that kind of grabs everybody's attention come regular season? I think a lot of people would answer Mac Wilson. I think Mac had a really strong early preseason. He struggled still in the run game, where I think he's got to get better. Um, sort of slowed down by the end of camp. I do think he's going to play. I think he's going to find the field. But I, I just think Greedy Williams is going to find a way to make an impact. He's too good. I just think he's too good at what they want to do. And uh, they're going to, you know, they're going to let Terrence Mitchell get the crack to start the year. But I think they're going to find ways to get Greedy on the football field because they absolutely should. He's uh, he's a playmaker. I think he's a guy who can cover a lot of variety of wide receiver prototypes. And I, I just think by the end of the year, you're going to feel really comfortable about uh, Greedy Williams being the long-term piece you know the long-term starter next to or sorry I should say opposite Denzel and um, you know my opinion he has the most I guess the betting odds favorite to make the most impact this year based on uh, how he played in camp preseason and just feeling good about needing to solidify that position long term